What's up guys? So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about my first three months as a coach and what I learned and, you know, working in this industry now for over two years, seeing like what most coaches are doing out there and like what they're being taught and the results they're getting. And then what are like the other coaches doing who are actually like the big dogs, like the 100K a month, 500K a month, million dollar a month coaches and businesses in this space like what are they doing and what makes them different you know because at the end of the day like we're all working the same amount of time approximately like that's not the answer um there's definitely some different ways of thinking and strategies that play into this and i'm going to talk about that in this video here for you today so i'm super excited so my first three months as a coach um you know i was grinding on facebook groups so most of us get taught that method right um, we get taught like literally go on Facebook, join all these groups for your niche and just start messaging people, right? So I was messaging like 50 people per day um, and I was just grinding and I was like, that's all I did. And I was trying to book calls like, and that was my only focus, right? So the first three months I booked 25 sales calls um, and I had one close, right? Which is like for anyone who knows that, like that's trash. That's really, really bad. Um, so that's like a 4% closing rate, I think. So, um, you know, why is that, right? Now, definitely the first thing that comes to mind is like, oh, you must have just really sucked at closing. And that definitely played into it. Like that was a component of it. But what I've learned and from working and from, from honestly, from myself getting sold into programs by people who are really good at selling, um, they're really good, but then they just don't deliver on their promises and, you know, and they also struggle in their business quite a bit to actually become successful. Um, I've seen a lot and I've helped a lot of students. Um, you know, I've worked with a lot of clients who, you know, wanted to become coaches and I've seen the people who've succeeded, seen the ones who haven't. So let's go into this. So sending 50 cold DMs a day. Um, I'm sure you relate to that. Like, a lot of these people, pretty much all these people in, in these groups, like, you know, you're going in there, especially if you're in like the make money niche at all, like you're helping businesses like get more customers or something like that. Um, you're going to find like most people are just there trying to also find customers. So you're messaging all these people who are just unqualified, like they don't even want you, your help. They don't. They have no idea who you are. And you're sending the messages and like, you know, 80 to 90 percent of your messages are just never getting seen. Um, and what you'll find too is like, what I found is that, you know, even if you end up booking calls with these people, like you do have like a big no-show rate, um, but also they're just like super unqualified people who usually have no money. And they also um, have no idea who you are, so they don't really trust you. Um, and even if you do manage to like close them, usually you're using like really pushy sales tactics where it's like in the moment um, to get them in, in the, in the door and like get a deposit down, um, you know, you end up getting like a super high dropout rate because if someone's buying based on like being pushed into a program, right? When they actually get in there, they didn't join because they really wanted to be a part of that program, right? They joined because they felt pressured into it in that moment and they gave in. So you'll find that like those clients, they'll drop out like very easily. They require a ton of energy to keep them like happy, keep them going. Um, and they also, uh, yeah, they just drop out super easily. So um, they also like put really small deposits down and have long payment plans. Like nobody wants to bring on a client where it's like a six month payment plan for like a few hundred bucks a month. Like that's not really a, a viable solution, um, especially when they drop out like after a few months. So really what is the solution? Um, Jeremy, my, my friend Jeremy Pogue, um, great guy. You guys should definitely check out his YouTube channel. Just search him up, Jeremy Pogue. Um, he, he shared this concept with me the other day. He said, more, better, new. So whenever you're, you're like looking at what do I need to change in my business to actually get better results? Well, the first thing you do is more, right? So I tried that. Like I tried going to 100 DMs a day, 
right? I tried that. It didn't, it didn't work. I tried making it better. So I tried like changing, you know, my, my chat script. I tried like posting on my profile a bunch and like going on their profile and messaging, like commenting on other stuff. Like using that cold outbound strategy just doesn't really seem to work if you're trying to get people directly onto a sales call. It doesn't, it's not a very good strategy. There are other ways you can use um, cold outbound, but I don't recommend putting people straight onto sales calls. So more better new, right? So it got to this point where like, you know, I realized like I just have to do something new because this isn't working. And I would go to my coaches at the time I was working with and they would just say, just keep doing it. Like, you know, they would just keep saying more, 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 right? More, more, more. And eventually you just hit this point where you just burn out as a coach because you're like, man, this, this is just like, this is silly. Like this isn't working, you know? So why am I doing this? And, um, so that's really, really what it comes back down to is like identifying the actual constraint. So, you know, what most coaches seem to think is like, I just need to work harder. And I've tried that strategy too. Like I've tried working 12 or 14 hours a day, right? It doesn't seem to make disproportionate, you know, progress compared to the hours put in. Our, one hour in does not equal one unit out of, of progress always, right? I want to put one hour in and get 100 units out. And that's what those successful guys are doing in this industry that are making a million dollars a month, right? Um, I used to think too, it was like, I'm not just, I'm just not good enough at sales. That's the problem. But although I wasn't the best at sales during this time, that wasn't really the main issue, right? And I'll go into what that was. Um, and then the other thing is like, it's just too saturated, right? So just like giving up, right? Just like trying to do more, 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 and then just giving up, right? Trying to do a little better, giving up. Um, and so what the actual problem is, right? You just, you don't have a disqualification system and you just take on anyone and everyone with a credit card. So that was my strategy. Like, it was just like, oh, I need clients, I need clients, I need clients. And I would just take on anyone who was willing to like put money down. Right. And so if you look at like Harvard as an example, Harvard, right, why is it that you can go to Harvard and pay 200 grand for four years or whatever it is? It's like a crazy amount of money. Um, go there, right, live in like a really like small dorm, old, crappy dorm room, um, you know, and there's like thousands of people applying, but only like a few thousand positions available or actual like vacancies available to in the school each year right why is it that people are willing to pay all that money and then come out and only make like you know maybe make like a hundred grand whereas you could go to like an online coach right online coaching business and you know like i mentioned that guy earlier jeremy literally he's already making like 80 grand a month with his business and it's only been five months since he started that business, right? So that's way more than like the average Harvard graduate will make by far, by multiples. So why is it that like all these people are like just willing to do that, right? And you got to think about it. Like Harvard, they don't just accept anyone. There's like this huge process. You have to have like all of these different metrics in order to be accepted. And so... For example, like if you have a low test score in like whatever the tests are called, um, your SATs or something, and they see that, like they'll just see that and just like throw your application to the side. Like they won't even look, right? And then there'll still be those people who are in like the top 1% of SAT scores and like grades in their, in their whole, you know, high school career, and they'll still get de denied, right? So there's like this massive exclusivity and there's like, what happens is that you know, when they only let in those top, top, top people, they end up getting crazy client results, right? Crazy client results. And so what they seem to find is that, you know, over time, what they'll find is that those people who are like the top tier, like the cream at the top, they're creating such amazing like results and progress in their life after 
that it's created like this amazing reputation, right, of word of mouth reputation over the last hundred years that they've been around, right? And so that's why people are willing to pay. And they don't even guarantee like you're going to get results, right? They'll just show you the statistics and um, they're never going to promise you that you're going to come out making this much money or this or that. You know, they'll say like, you know, not this isn't the same for everyone. Like you might come in and be a complete like mess up after. Um, so people are still willing to do that just because they've had this disqualification process. And then the word of mouth, which is the most scalable version of uh you know, client acquisition, um, it just kicks in and just compounded so hard. And that's what you want to happen in your coaching business, right? So you need to disqualify the low quality clients and you can't just be taking anyone and everyone in. Um, now that goes like, that's a little bit different. Like say if you're taking on your first few clients and you need to like, you know, get proof of concept, et cetera, et cetera, um, get some case studies, right? But in the long term, like that's the strategy you want to use. You want to have a disqualification process. And the next thing is that like none of the leads know, like, and trust you. So if you are just relying on your sales skills in the sales call to actually create clients, you're doing everything wrong because a client should come onto that call. A prospect should come onto that call already sold. Like Imagine if you just had all your your sales calls were just like enrollment calls, essentially. Like people just come on and they've already just consumed all of your content and they're totally sold on what you do and they already know everything. So that's why I believe in like giving away the farm online, right? You want to like become a thought leader online and own your own audience. And that is what you see where people are so successful, right? Is because they own their own audience. Now, um, another example of this is like the gym example, right? So I just call them bro one and bro two. So bro one, like bro one, he works out five days a week, just like bro two. Um, but he parties on the weekends and he drinks alcohol. He has no diet plan. He doesn't track his protein. He sleeps like crap, um, you know, and he's worked out for a year straight, Right. And then bro number two, he works out five days a week, just like bro number one, but he eats 200 grams of protein per day and he sleeps like a baby. These two guys are going to look completely different at the end of the day. Like given they had the exact same genetics, they would look completely different at the end of that year, right? And the difference is not how much they worked out. The difference is the strategy they used. Right. So a year later, bro number two is miles ahead of bro number one. Right. Bro number one might even look like almost the same as like when he started. And the reason behind that is like strategy over hustle. Right. The strategy over hustle. So the game is about leverage and learning how to position yourself. Right. The game is is not about hustling and how how much you move. It's not about movement at all. So that brings me to the next point, progress over movement, which means like one hour of focused work is actually 10 times more powerful than 10 hours of scattered work. It really is. So like you could spend 10 hours planning something and take action on it for one hour and make way more progress than someone who didn't spend like spent barely any time planning and just went in there and just like did all this stuff right? (laughs) Um, And you see why they don't like make results because all they're trying to do is more, 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 more. They're not doing better or new, right? The other thing you see is that people just go straight from starting something, they do a little bit, and then they go to new instantly, right? So what you want to optimize for is progress. So actually improving over time. Now, the next thing is action over anxiety. So, you know, the reason why people go from like new or they go from just starting to new instantly and they get to go to the next thing and they have what, what's known as shiny object syndrome is because they're actually avoiding versus solving. It's actually like a perverse form of procrastination. So that's really like the key principles here of like the way that you, the, the, the like foundational principles of like the thinking behind it everything I've gone over so far. So how, like, what does this actually look like 
when you apply it to coaching, right? Because this mental model could be used for anything, like the gym, for example. Um, but building a following of people who actually know, like, and trust you. So that's really the key because if you want to be talking to people on sales calls who already know, like, and trust you, they know, like, what your, your disqualification process is, and they see the value of your program, and they really, like, logically want to do it, then when they come into a sales call, they're just going to be, like, the easiest sales call, and they're going to really, like, want to do it, and they're already going to know what they're going to get. So that's really, really key here to scaling an online coaching business in 2023 and beyond, right? So how do you go about that? Well, finding one method that works and sticking to it. So this should say one platform. So like sometimes you see like people try to do five, 10 platforms at once and they don't even have a team and they're just doing it all themselves. It's really like unrealistic to expect that. So what you want to do is you actually want to just pick one platform and become the best. And at the end of the day, that will give you the most results. So just going all in. So whether that would be YouTube, which I highly recommend if you don't have a YouTube channel and you have lots of valuable lessons like this one I'm sharing, definitely start posting on YouTube because in the next six months to a year, it will become like one of the most valuable assets in your business. Um, other platforms are Instagram, right? Twitter. Um, I've seen people be getting crazy results on Twitter, LinkedIn, um, whatever it is, like pick one, maybe two, um, and just go all in on those and just like put the blinders on and just go, go, go. Keep getting better and better on those because you know that at the end of the day it works and you don't need something new. You just need to get better and do more. And then the last thing is like check out my past videos. And I'm going to be sharing like more of these actual in-depth step-by-step strategies on how to achieve this and how to actually go out there and make bank. Because like, to be honest, guys, I've spent time struggling as a coach. I've worked for other bigger coaching companies and I've seen like the mistakes they're making and all the mistakes all their students were making. And I've also know a lot of guys in the coaching industry who are absolutely destroying it. So to me, it's like really, really clear. And I'm going to be making more videos about this because I think it's really important. I'm super passionate about it because I think that coaching is really, you know, it's a great opportunity to like become successful online, become a multimillionaire. But at the same time, I also think it's a great opportunity to develop yourself and develop your clients and actually make positive impact on the world. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I'll definitely catch you in the next one. I'm going to be coming in hot, so get ready for it. Cheers.